So, hello, welcome back to the channel. Today is Sunday the 12th of uh, November. You know what that day is? That's This is, te well, you know what weekend it is? It's Telford weekend. Um, I was there yesterday, and so this is a post um, Telford uh, video, it's sort of like a review. Um, but lots of you have already been to Telford. <clears throat> Many, some of you won't have been, so um, this is the Sunday, so it's the last day. None of this information will help you this year, but if you haven't been, you're planning on going next year, then some of the information in this video will be of use to you. Um, so, where to begin? Um, allow for traffic when you're traveling. Uh, the traffic around Telford can get quite busy if you leave it late. You've got rush hour, even though it's a Saturday, um, you know, it's a big event, traffic will build up. So allow a little bit of time extra or go later in the day. But be warned, if you are not an IPMS holder, you will have to queue to get in. Now, like me, I thought, yeah, I can queue, um, but I was not prepared for the length of the queue involved. It was um, it was long. Um, I do not exaggerate. It was very, very long, um, and you could be queuing for hours, uh, quite literally. Um, so, you know, if you're not an IPMS holder, you need to uh, get there early or you go there much later and, and wait for the queue to have gone down. So I think the queue had gone by about one o'clock, um, so you could get there later in the day and do it that way. But there's other factors involved. Make no mistake, Telford is huge. The queue is huge, Telford is huge. Everything about the Telford weekend is huge, just period. Um, the, 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 it's just massive. Um, I could only get there for the day, and it was immense. Uh, it was overwhelming. I was totally... Uh, there was so much going on around me and so many things to see and so, uh, you know it just it just it was just overwhelming i've got no other word to describe it it um you know you you're constantly jostling about to try and see stuff it's a very busy event um if you're in a wheelchair or on a mobility scooter it's it's even more difficult uh, because you, trying to get into to the stalls is very hard because people just queue up in front and some people are quite to be honest they're quite arrogant and they will if they sense that somebody's trying to look in behind them they will close they will close ranks to prevent you from pinching any spot it's um, insane behavior but uh, not everyone gladly so, once we were in, uh, you're first greeted by the immense size of it all. Uh, you actually sort of enter, I think we entered roughly in the centre of the halls. So then you've got to decide, you go left, you go right. Um, uh, you know, that's where it all begins there. So, uh, we slowly started making our way around. I had a shopping list, that went out the window. Um, it was a, you know, I just started seeing stuff on offer, and um, and I'll show you some bits that I got in a minute when we go over to the bench. Um, so um, I'm just trying to. So much went on. Uh, so I got to meet lots of people. I had uh, some people coming up to me that uh, seemed to know me very well. And I apologise if I just looked at you blankly. Um, I didn't remember a lot of your names. Um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, 
I will have a check later and see if I can pick some of the faces out and, and, and remember some. Some of you, uh, obviously I did, the regular guys that I meet up with in the hangout and that, they were all there. I had a great time with them. Uh, we got Paul, um, Tim. You've got to see Tim. Uh, he does a magic trick with... Uh, he's got this uh, magic calculator that does a trick. He's fantastic. It's uh, superb. Uh, it just makes things disappear. It's brilliant. Um, and then there's uh, obviously Lee. I've never met Lee before. Lee is the uh, other half of uh, UMP. So, yeah, other half of UMP. You've got Paul and then there's Lee. So it's nice to meet Lee, finally, and say hello. Um, and I avoided asking questions about the magazine. So you can thank me for that later, Lee. Um, Paul, yes. Uh, uh, Ivan, I met Ivan finally. Um... And I met Andreas, I met Graham, who gave me a hug. Ah, huh, Graham! That was nice. I've never been hugged by another man before, it was weird. Um, oh, this is Carl, uh, nice to meet Carl. Uh, Cy, yeah, I met Cy, and uh, he's, he's a lovely bloke as well. Um, it's just great to meet these people. Jamie. Now, Jamie, this was a funny one. Because whenever I see Jamie, he's quite low on the screen, on my screen. He's about halfway halfway up my screen. His head is sort of there. So, I was expecting somebody a little bit shorter than me. But he's really tall. Um, and he, I think he might be taller than me, actually. Uh, so, yeah, I think he might be taller than me. Uh, there was a couple of guys there I didn't know. Um, I didn't get introduced to them, but it was very busy. Uh, so, you know, was, I'm not too worried about that. Um, obviously, weren't important enough, but that's okay. I can live with that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was a great time. Uh, so, pace yourself when you go round. Try and have a look round first. Uh, get an idea of where the kits are um, and you know try and orientate yourself it's not easy at all um, I ended up buying a lot of things that I didn't it was a bit like the uh, Nanny McPhee I bought a lot of things I didn't want um, and none of the things I did want she does that thing at the end does she I'll come to you when you are, I'm not needed or something. Anyway, balls to that. Um, the, not the Nanny McPhee thing, forget that, that's a load of rubbish. Um, not the film, the, the thing I was doing. So, um, what did I get? I, I, I'm going to show you that in a minute. I'm so flustered this morning because I was planning on doing this and then I've just, Angela, just five minutes ago, said I've got to go out. So... I've got nothing prepared and I've just had to whack the camera on and, and start talking so that uh, I can get it done before she gets back, which is probably not going to happen. So, where do I get to? Pace yourself. Um, but if you see something you'd want and they've only got one, you must get it because it, ch chances are it will be gone if you go for a second look round. Um, yeah, it's just overwhelming. I can guarantee this, if you enjoy modelling, you are going to love Telford. There is no way that you can go to Telford as a modeller and come away and think, oh, I didn't reckon much to that. That is not possible. It is fantastic. It really is. Everyone was so friendly there um, that I met. Um, apart from one guy who tripped over my wheelchair, uh, I've got a wheelchair uh, that I have to use, I can't walk a long distance, I can only walk short distances so then I sit in a wheelchair because of my back and my leg um, and he, it was while I was out of the wheelchair he tripped over one of the front legs and he just glared at me like I was some pariah and uh, yeah I thought you're a, you're, you're a nice person, we'll just leave it at that. Um, so, quick swig of coffee. It's first coffee of the day. No, it's not. Just remember to add one earlier. And I've got a sore throat. 
from talking yesterday. That's um, all the usual suspects are there. Um, uh, the flower guy, uh, forget his name, Phil Flower or something. Um, and then there's there's no, I didn't see the uh, the, the Birmingham guy. Got I guess he must have been there somewhere. What's his name? I can't remember. Um, yeah, but all your usual suspects were there. Hannant's, um, Edward, uh, they're all there. Models for Heroes was at the front entrance. So, um, you know, if, if you can leave, you know, buy a small kit, donate it to them, uh, or a magazine, or, you know, anything model related, donate it to them, maybe give them vouchers, your car, um, I'm going to send mine on, your flying hours, anything like that. Uh, just drop them on to Models for Heroes, or you can, uh, if you've missed it at the show, you can still donate to them through their website, I believe. Um, I'll try and leave a link in the description, and uh, yeah, it's a well worth cause. They do um, uh, a lot for soldiers coming back from uh, combat zones, and you know, great charity, uh, and it's great to be involved with. I've donated before and um, you know occasionally I donate when I can or I give items to them fantastic the guy that runs it is Malcolm Childs I didn't get to see him yesterday but uh, it's a great thing you're doing Malcolm great um, so I could waffle on about it for hours but I haven't got the time now so I'm going to quickly change over to the other camera and we're going to have a look at the few bits that I got while I was there. Okay then, so there was some smaller bits that I bought. They, they had these in the baskets, big uh, loads of them. And basically you've, you've got a, I, I didn't have time to take my app out and check which paints I needed. So I took a gamble. I knew that I'd, got, I'd not got purple... I'm just checking back at my thing now just to make sure I was right. Yeah, I haven't got purple, I haven't got pink, I haven't got clear yellow. Um, I haven't got yellow green. And so I knew there was uh, over 50% there that I hadn't got. So I took a gamble on that. I think I paid eight quid. If I remember right, I thought it was a tenner, but I think it might have been, it was either eight or ten. Well, we'll say ten, the dearer side. They uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six. Yeah, so, you know, that was a bargain. It was less than it is in the shops, so in my definition, that's a bargain. That's number one. Number two. Uh, I thought I'd give these a go. Normally eight quid, now two ninety nine. My tweezers are all getting a bit worn and... Um, and bent at the ends. Um, I've had them a couple of years. Uh, I couldn't afford the Tamiya ones. I did look. Um, I mean, I did have the money for them. They were 18, 19 quid, something like that. But um, I'd only got a couple of hundred pounds to spend and a uh, hundred pounds on my card for my Apex. Oh, let one go. So, uh, I mean, I let uh, uh, a gift go, a surprise go. Um, I didn't just fart, that's what I'm saying. Um, so I got one of these, uh, they're Pro Edge. Um, so I got a curved 0.6 inch tweezer, um, which I think may be happy, f may be happy, may be um, useful because they're not, um, they've got serrated, they've got serrated jaw there. So, um, they look as though they could be good. So I got them. Reduced from 8 quid, 2 99 Number two. Number three is another set of tweezers. I don't know how sharp these are, but they're self-locking. Um, again, from 8 down to 2 99 Number three. Number four, I got myself a, a decal tray. I've never used these, um, so this will be interesting. I'm going to review this at a later date, so keep your eye out for that. When I've used it and had a go with it, um, I'll probably review it. Um, no, I am going to review it, it's just how I go about doing it. But that will be at a later date, so that's a definite for reviewing. Keep your eyes out for that. Number three. 
number four and number five i always use these they are the bees bees knees dog stangly bits whichever your preferred phrase is ultimate model of sanders i don't care what anyone says i love these things they're brilliant um and i always buy the starter pack because you get so much for your money in there you get that one that one that one that one and that one so you know you get the whole range one each yeah one each but i mean they're great i don't need them at the moment but i got them anyway and then i got the thinny sticks again Oh, brilliant thing i think these were seven quid or might have been six quid and these were 750 um and you got uh, two four six eight ten thinny sticks in there of varying degrees so ump stand starter pack thinny sticks they've got a whole range there anything you need from ump they've got it there that's number what do we get to four forget the numbering there we go free sticker Obviously free, it's got to be a bargain if it's free. And then the Apex brush, which I haven't used. Um, I'm not going to review this. I will probably give my opinions on it at some point, but I'm not going to officially review this. Why am I not going to officially review this? Because it's been done so many times. Um, everyone's reviewed it. Everyone said that it's great. It's the best thing they've ever done. They've got rid of their old airbrushes. There's no reason to think that mine is going to be any different whatsoever. Um, it's UMP. I've never had a problem with any UMP product. Um, so, you know, I really not. Unless I start using this and something absolutely, I don't know, goes wrong with it that shouldn't or... Um, I'm not happy with it in any way, shape, or form. Then I might do a review if I think, um, I, if I disagree completely with what people are saying in the other reviews, then I'll review it um, purely because that means I'm the only one that's done that. But uh, apart from that, I don't see any reason to review this. Uh, it look, I've had it out of the box. It's all set up. Um, I've took my Awata one down for now. And, and box that up. I'm going to use this as my general work brush now. I'm that confident it's going to work as well, or if not better than what I've got. And um, and I'll use my Iwata for detail work, or if in a few months I find I'm not using it, I'll probably sell it on. So we'll wait and see. Um, but that's the ultimate modeling. That's my biggest buy. Um, love it. Well, and uh, so that's that. I'm going to put that back in its box, actually. Because I like to keep things nice and clean and new. And that way, if ever I sell them on, they haven't lost any value. Important lesson there. Let me pop that back up there. While I pop that back up there, I'll drag this next one out. My parents gave me some money for my birthday, which is in December. December the 13th. If... Uh, anyone wants to know um, no I'm kidding I'm only joking um, so and I bought this with it I paid 35 pounds for this and it's a parachute regiment uh, uh, resin bust 1 6 scale I can tell you this box is heavy for what for what you know that is uh, I, I like it was the only black box there it stood out it was pretty much one of the biggest boxes there and I said how much is that and I was really truly expecting him to say about 70 80 pounds um, no 35 quid he'd got complete uh, soldiers there Marines um, with their utility trousers on and everything that all their all their armor everything like that and they were 70 pounds and that, that's that's uh, complete resin um, there were other stalls there that done a full predator figure and this thing must have stood about i don't know two feet tall and uh, it was hollow but it was uh, i believe it was 40 pounds um but when it's painted up who cares uh but the res they had other resin figures there man one of my favorite things i saw there was an astronaut i've been looking i've been looking for an astronaut for so long um i just want to you know it's uh, 
it's one of these things that I've, I locked eyes onto ages ago and uh, I really want to build this Astral. I can't find one anywhere. Um, they didn't have one. It was such a shame. It was uh, one of the things that I wanted the most. Um, there were lots of stories like that. There, I mean, there was an astronaut that I went for that I couldn't find. There was uh, a German U-boat, and this thing is 106 centimetres when built. It's, uh, it comes in a huge box, and it was reduced from 89 to 45 pounds. Oh no, sorry, 39.99, 45 was the other one, 39.99, and um, I got the money, everything else, I got no way of carrying it about, and no way of getting it home, it was just too big for the car, so sadly I had to let that one go, um, hopefully, I don't know, it'll come up at another point, um, we'll see, but uh, another lost one, um, loads of stuff there. Uh, anyway, we must carry on. We're running out of time. So I'm just at the back here pulling stuff out. Um, I bought this off my friend Ivan, uh, who you know off the live show. Um, love Chinooks. Um, never had an opportunity to get one before. And Ivan kindly sold me this one for £10, and I'm very grateful to him for that. Thank you very much, Ivan. Uh, you can, of course, go to his channel. Um, he does a very good channel, and he's a very enthusiastic um, IPMS supporter, a very enthusiastic te Telford person. Um, just watch his videos about the beginning of the day, and his excitement will show through them videos, I can assure you. Um, just uh, take your motion sickness tablets first. Some of the bigger buys I got, the bigger sort of uh, bargain buys, um, that was, I won that on an auction, so that one doesn't count. I got this, um, it's a 148th Afghan single story house, um, that's from Airfix. Uh, normally 30 quid, got it for a fiver. That's going to go on one of my dioramas. I'm hoping to... Oh, it's resin as well. I did not know that. Undecorated resin model. Wow. That explains why it's quite heavy. Yeah, so um, that's going to go on one of my dioramas, probably with the US main battle tank, um, which I'm planning to do at some point in the next year or so. I'm just uh, moving into... Um, uh, dioramas. I've never done them before, but um, just having a drink of coffee again quickly. Yeah, so um, great buy. We'll be reviewing this. Um, well, what there is to review, I'll be taking it out of the box and showing you at another point when I've got some time. Then we've got uh, my two big, biggest kits that I bought. This kit I've been looking at longingly for quite some time in Hobbycraft, but they've always asked too much for it. Um, I think Airfix do a version as well that they want too much for it. Uh, it's just going to fit in screen. And obviously it's the Handley page, Victor K Mark II. I love it. Um, it's quite a big kit. It's only 172nd, but already we can see it's 48, 48.1 centimetres long and almost 50 centimetres wide. That is quite a beast of a kit. Um, how much did I pay for that? If I can show you. £15. Pounds. Says it all. Says it all. So, I mean, there must have been... Um, I know I was going with the expectation there wasn't going to be any bargains because that's what um, that's what everyone had said. But uh, I think uh, there must have been more bargains this year than last because I, I, I saw loads, really. Well, for me... Um, granted, some of my kits are, especially this one, is a bit knocked about, but um, 
Now this was on a stall. All the box, all the kits are new, but the boxes are damaged in some way. Um, so, and so this was marked up at thirty-six quid. But there's a big sign as you go in onto the stall that all kits are thirty percent cheaper than what their price states. So and he actually done it for a little bit more than that. He done me that for twenty five. It should have been twenty six, I think. That's, well, ten percent off would be uh, two six two four six. 6, 12, anyway, roughly about right. So yeah, um, it's a one ninth kit Honda RC 211V. Uh, great bit of kit. So um, I'm really pleased with that. Really, really pleased. Excellent. Just pop that back. So there are only two big hits. There we go. How we come to paints that I got. Um, had some interesting, little interesting tidbits. Um, not tidbits, tidbits. Ha <laughs> ha! Not tidbits, tidbits. Zero paints. These are my first that I've bought. I've been given zero paints previously by both Paul and Sam. Uh, Paul's came with a ninja kit that I bought, and Sam gave me kindly gave me some when he sold me his Formula One FW14B Williams kit, which I will be reviewing at a later date. That is a must see. That kit is fantastic. It's got everything in it. Um, it's one twelfth scale. It's a beast of a kit, and you cannot miss that. So I'm going to be reviewing that at some point. Uh, so what did I get? I tried to cover kits that I knew I was going to be building this year. Um, so <clears throat> I got the metallic blue for the Red Bull, uh, the RB6, which is the Formula One car. I got some carbon um, for all the ceramic discs I do. Uh, brake discs that will come in handy and I got the Rosso Barchetta for my Ferrari F40 and the diamond white for my Ford Escort Mark II and any other white products that um, might come about but essentially my Ford um, I'm really stoked about using these um, I'm so 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 happy that I've got some to try um, I've got to get a better mask um, I've got to sort out covering the animals um, I'm right next to a window I've got a fan right near me and an extractor uh, so I don't anticipate any problems I did speak to the man uh, the man himself about uh, what I could and couldn't use and the best methods uh, to cope with fumes etc etc and got all the best advice I could so um, I didn't just go and buy these without consulting people first um, I have spoke to many people about them and um, there we go I also managed to get finally the two pack clear coat system diamond finish. Um, I'm so pleased about having this finally. I've wanted it for so long. Um, ever since I first saw Paul use it, uh, I need to. Uh, what I'm going to do with this first is I intend to spray something minuscule. Uh, maybe even smaller than 143rd kit, maybe just a, a wing on an old test kit. Um, I want to, I've got some, some ideas in place to protect the animals, um, to protect me, and uh, to help vent this stuff out as quick as possible. So um, I will test a bit and then uh, see how that goes. 
and then from there I'll increase it slightly um, and, uh, and and see and see how things work out for me. Um, so that is to be used in the future, uh, not with future. I'm not on about the future polish. Um, I'm so really pleased that I've got it though. Uh, just having it is uh, a, a big thing for me, and then I can work on the safe health and safety uh, before I start using it. Um, I have got, like I say, I've got plans in place. Um, not a problem. So you know, it's there for me. It's in my, it's in my arsenal of things to use. So uh, very pleased about that. And. I think that might be it for me. There wasn't, um, I could have spent more, but uh, you know, with money being tight, I didn't want to just go and spend all my money. I actually planned to come home with some so I could put some back in the bank and feel less guilty, uh, which is what I've done. Um, so, that's, um, oh, I've got some airbrush cleaner as well, forgot about that. More airbrush cleaner, you can never have too much airbrush cleaner. And although it was supposed to come from Telford, I actually got it a couple of days earlier, some Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner, which uh, should be in everyone's cave. This stuff is like angel tears. Unicorn piss, whatever you want to call it, this is it. So, um, I'm pretty sure that's it. So thanks for watching. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed Telford. I will definitely be going again next year. Oh, I got some rocket hot glue as well. Forgot about that. <laughs> I keep seeing things now. And uh, some brushes. No, I already had them. Sorry, bought them just before I went. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's definitely it now. Right. So, and Angela's just come through the door. She did buy a kit. I forgot about this. She bought a kit that she's going to build herself. She's never modelled before, um, so she bought herself, let me just grab it, she bought herself this FA18A Hornet, which I am going to review, hopefully, before she starts it, uh, by Academy, reduced from 20 quid to £5. Pound. Um, it's obviously an older kit, 2009, 2010, but it's still a bloody good buy. Um, excellent and the kit just so that we may as well do the, the whole the whole lot the kit I got from the auction which I won off I didn't win uh, auctioned by Tim was this uh, street burner Chevelle oh, oh, a little shudder there because I thought of a Vauxhall Chevette for a minute Ooh. And I might uh, use that as my burnt out car to try some of my rust techniques on. So, oh God, that's um, unfortunately I didn't get many photos, uh, which is dreadful. <coughs> uh, yeah, and Angela's back. So I'm going to go now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to tune into my live show every Wednesday, half eight p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, and uh, I will see you then. Bye for now.